All right, Larry Krug here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Should the Niners sign free agent safety Justin Simmons? We'll talk about that coming up next. But first, a word about Pig and a Pickle. Two locations, Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week in both spots from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Go say hi to Damon and Mary. Get some brisket, some brisket chili. Tell them that Krug sent you. This video also brought to you by... Sharp Corners, Sports Cards, and Collectibles. They're at 205 Cypress Avenue in Pacific Grove, California, along the Monterey Peninsula. Call my friend Anthony Catania. He's at 831-521-5264. Should the Niners sign Justin Simmons? Now, Albert Breer thinks the Niners should. Um, Breer wrote about it earlier this week, and, you know, Simmons is intriguing. He's a four-time All-Pro. Uh, he leads the NFL in interceptions since he was drafted out of Boston College. Niners are definitely on the thin side at safety. Talanoa Fong is coming off a torn ACL. Um, you know, a guy like Simmons would definitely make the 49ers defense better. So you look at them and, and you look at their situation, you're like, well, they could definitely use a veteran safety. I mean, look at their safety spot. Right now, it's Hafanga and Jair Brown. As we said, Hafanga's coming off the ACL. He probably will be ready for week one, but we don't know for sure. Then you got Malik Mustafa, fourth-round draft choice out of Wake Forest. You got George Odom as the backup. So Odom's more of a special teamer, and Mustafa's a rookie. After that, you got Jalen Mahoney, who's an undrafted free agent, even though he's an impressive athlete out of Vanderbilt. Um, I'm looking forward to what he does this summer. There's also Taylor Hawkins and Eric Harris, but those guys are more street free agent types, practice squad types than they are real starters. So let's talk about Simmons for a second. Simmons is an interesting player. He was, played at Boston College, 6'2", 200-pound corner, 33-inch uh, arms, uh, big hands. Uh, ran a pretty ordinary 40 time coming out, 4'6", 1, had a 1'6", 1, 10-yard split but a 40 inch vertical 16 reps on the, on the bench too, at a pretty deep, pretty small weight. So um, he was an all conference player for Boston college. And um, you know, he's a good guy too. He, you know, he worked with kids and in pop Warner football and has been a pop Warner coach and um, but he's got length. He's got versatility. He started off his college career in a very strong way. He started seven games as a true freshman, six at safety, one at corner, made 52 tackles that first year, um, stepped back a little bit as a sophomore and didn't start at all, and then came back, gotten more into it in 2014. He started all 13 games, six at free safety, six at cornerback uh, after they had injuries at corner. And he actually led the uh, Boston College Eagles that season with 76 tackles and two picks. He broke up five passes. And then he capped his career with being a second-team all-conference player in 2015. He led the team that year, five interceptions as a full-time starter at free safety. And um, this guy's got good ball skills. You know, he 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 tackles with urgency. He's got good ball skills. Uh, he's got good toughness. He's got range. He's got length. He's got coverability. He even has a little bit of special teams ability. Uh, in college, they used him in the robber role. Um, and he was really good at making the correct reads. He's a pretty consistent player in coverage. Um, you know, he's got cornerback experience, so that's really good as a safety. It's becoming more and more of a coverage game. He's a little thin. He's a little lanky. He doesn't quite have the physicality to be a, an enforcer at safety, but if you're looking for a single high safety and a cover three, um, I think this is a guy that could absolutely play that free safety role down the field and cover all those blades of grass. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, the question is, what's it going to cost? Um, and we're now at a time of the year where, you know, how well, how the Niners have had their, their DB coach has had a look at, at Malik Mustafa and Jalen Mahoney. And they got a pretty good, and Renardo Green, another guy who could play a little free safety. They got a pretty good idea, I'm sure, at this point, of who can play free safety. Now, I look at, at Jair Brown as a guy who could play strong safety or free safety, but I think ideally he's a strong safety, and I think the same could be said for Afonga, and maybe even the same could be said for Mustafa. So do they even have a free safety on the roster? Is Renardo Green going to get some run at free safety because of the depth that exists at corner? So, I mean, these are all kind of unknowns at this point. We don't know exactly what's out there. Um, 
I, I like the idea of getting Simmons, but at what price? I mean, that's really the question. What's the price? They're hugged up against the cap. They've got to have to pay their quarterback big money in a year. Um, I don't know that they're suited to make a, you know, a, any kind of a significant addition that brings in any kind of high salaried player in any way, shape, or form. Now, one thing the Niners may find themselves forced to do as their roster gets more expensive is they may have to take some shots on some younger, less experienced players. Uh, just to give you an idea, you know, a couple of safeties in the articles that I've read in the last few weeks about the cutdown and, and guys who may be on the outside looking in at the cutdown, a couple guys that have been mentioned here, are Lewis seen and Richie Grant. So let's talk about them for a second, because these guys potentially could be had far cheaper than trading than than you know going after a guy like Justin Simmons. Um, Simmons is going to cost you some money. You know these guys are younger. Uh, Simmons is a little bit more ready to play. These guys are a little bit more developmental. But Seen is an interesting player. He was a first round draft choice in the 2022 draft. Then he broke his leg, and now he's sitting sixth on the depth chart at safety. I mean he's not the, he's not running with the ones or the twos. He's running with the threes. Harrison Smith and Cam Bynum are the Vikings starting safeties. Uh, Theo Jackson and Jay Ward are listed as their twos and seen is listed as, as a, um, as a, you know, a, a third teamer. So there's a very good chance that he gets cut uh, this summer. Now we'll see how he plays, but I love this player at Georgia six, two, about 200 pounds, incredibly physical, good against the run, good against the pass, super, super, super tone setter type player. Uh, yeah, he had the broken leg, and it probably had a hard rehab coming off of that. But um, if I'm the 49ers, I'd be all over Lewis Seen if Seen's available, just because he's got a lot of talent, um, and he's he's young, he's cheap, uh, he's got a lot of talent, and he could be available at the end of August. August 27th is the cutdown day, and there's a good chance he's available. Now, another guy who I also liked in college, um, who's also in a sim similar situation, is Richie Grant, the safety who was a second-round pick in the 21 draft of the Atlanta Falcons. Now, he's sitting with the twos. There's DeMarco Hellams, Jesse Bates the third. Uh, there's also Micah Abernathy, and they've got a couple other guys there as well. Um, and Richie Grant is sitting with the, with the twos. He's not necessarily a starter, and I love this player at Central Florida, um, you know, six feet, 200 pounds, very physical, good movement skills, good coverability, still only 26. You know, if a guy like Lewis Seen or Richie Grant is available because they get caught up in a numbers game, that might be the better route to go than to go for uh, Simmons. You know, Simmons, Simmons is a little bit older. Simmons has got a little bit more experience. Simmons is going to cost you more. Um, but like Seen and Grant are young and they're physical. And I think both those guys have the ability to um, impact the 49ers secondary. Now, Grant is probably a bit more of a strong safety than a free safety, but I like his his ability coverage wise down the field and Seen as well. Um, and they're they're good young safeties that might be able to be had at the cut down or sometime this summer for a very, very reasonable price. So should the Niners go after, you know, the question of the video, should the Niners sign Justin Simmons? I would pass. I would pass on Justin Simmons. I would give Malik Mustafa a good look. I'd want to take a look at Jalen Mahoney. And then let's check how the cutdown goes. If Lewis Seen is available, maybe you pick up Lewis Seen. If Richie Grant's available, maybe you pick up Richie Grant. Um, I don't think that they have to go for the more proven player um, in Justin Simmons. I think they can... They can take a shot on some young, talented players that they may have liked in the draft a couple of years back who are now suddenly on the street at the end of the at the cut down at the end of August. So and maybe you do a pre act pre, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a proactive uh, strike and you trade for these guys before the cut down. Maybe you don't wait till they're cut. Maybe you, you you contact Minnesota and Atlanta and you show some interest and maybe you trade a day three pick to one of those two teams for one of those young safeties. I like that route a little bit more than going with Justin Simmons. All right. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Thanks to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.